Hello everyone, my name is Guilherme and this is part two of making GTA but alone and in my own game engine. And I'm glad I did not record everything in last video because uh, if you missed the first video, we started to make this game and I wanted to make a very uh, robust and complex animation system and I've started to do that in the previous video and I have to say, <laughs> after I stopped recording, I uh, had to spend two full-time days or more working on that because I realized that that was requiring a lot of refactor and a lot of different new features for Cave. And if you missed this, the first video and if you missed everything that's going on in this channel, this is my own game engine. This is Cave Engine. And uh, so I've, I'm implementing this. It's almost released to the public. And uh, this version... Uh, here is already available on my Patreon, so if you want to check it out, just go ahead and uh, check my Patreon page. And by the way, huge thank you to Sam, to Michael Constantine. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce your name correctly, I guess, <laughs> but he did. Uh, he's one of my patrons, and he did implement a better shadow system to Cave. So now the shadow is looking good. <laughs> uh, and by the way. So this is my engine and I'm implementing I decided to create this game that is like something like a GTA 1, but similar to Total Anarchy, which is this uh, top-down game that I, that I discovered a couple of weeks ago. And it turns out that this game only have one review on scene. And <laughs> well, I think, it, I think I will check it out and let it review because it seems to be a cool game. And I'm making my game a little bit similar to this, visuals here but of course it's more similar than uh, to GTA 1 uh, which is a top-down GTA and I will take advantage of this to improve Cave Engine which is my game engine and I do have spoilers a lot of spoilers in this video the first one is I finished what I was implementing in the na in the last video and I also did more you can see that I do have vehicle physics now in Cave and I will show that in a moment uh, for you all but first of all let's hit play here and see what I have new so this is oops the vehicle looks completely wrong here I think the scaling is incorrect let me figure this out save this now it looks correct uh, not correct because the scale is off. But anyways, focus here in the in the character first. Let me see if I can disable. This is uh, something that I will actually do live. Can I disable this and play the game? Yes, I can. Here we go. Uh, you can see that the character is idling here and you can see that I can walk around and I can run and it will change the animation just fine. So this is all uh, already pre-made in cave i did not have to write any custom code here uh this character that is moving walking and running and there's this camera which is a top down camera following him this is done 100 percent using cave engine uh built-in systems which is amazing and that's what i want i want you to be able to uh create like a basic system to get started with your game using my game engine uh straight out of the box. I mean, I don't want you to write custom code just to, for doing that. And how that works. So the entity, this entity here is a player component. And by the way, uh, Michael, one of uh, my patrons that I mentioned before, uh, he did a, a lot of, he made me like a lot of cool feedbacks uh, when it comes to Cave Engine. And I was able to implement and improve a bunch of things. So if you if you are excited about Cave Engine and if you want to use it in your projects, uh, it's better to say thank you to Michael as well because he did a lot of feedbacks and as well as other uh, people on my Discord server, just like Half that I always mention here because he he's helping a lot in the development of the game engine in terms of feedbacks and creating new things using it, which is amazing. Uh, and he figured out like a bug here that it was able to select uh, an entity child and I fixed it now. But anyway, so this is an entity template. I can delete this and go to my gameplay. So this is the player, uh, which is an entity template that you can create here. And it, this is basically like Unity prefabs. This is basically like uh, a real engine uh, blueprint system. So you can see I can drag and drop a template. And if I double click in this template, I can edit it. And let's say that I want to add like a mesh. So this is a cube on top of my player. If I go back to my scene, you can see that all my templated objects do have these changes applied. So th that's a very classic uh, template system. Uh, that way you can create a player, enemies, vehicles, and everything you want. And immediately 
change it just fine. So just to, um, to point out this K feature. And what's new here if, is if I select this player, so this is the player, uh, by the way, new feature, if I click here outside any object, it will deselect the object. This was a feedback by Michael as well that I've implemented because right now if you click here outside, you'll be able to edit the scene settings. Uh, and it also deselect the objects right now. So if I select my player and go to the component, you can see in the mesh component that I do have the animation. And this is a classic thing. Uh, I can click here and by the way, check this out. It looks way better now because it displays the thumbnails now. If I go ahead to my mesh, you can see that it will display my mesh thumbnails. And this is new. Um, I've implemented that. After the last video, so this is brand new to Cave, soon you guys will be able to access this. And that's the same for the materials and for everything, for the animations and the armature. Of course, the animation and armature does not have uh, a thumbnail, so there's just an icon, but that's cool to have this. Uh, so if I go ahead and go to my character animation, of course, I can play a uh, simple animation. For example, the player idle, uh, which is this one that is uh, really being executed. But for example, I can go ahead and change to player run and can see that the character will start running. Can play the, I know, the player walk and it will start working. But what's new now is that I can create a super animation type. So, and what do I mean about that? Uh, you can see here that I have, for example, a death animation because like when a character dies, uh, you want to like, let's say you have an enemy and you want this to die using multiple different death animations. For example, I have this one, which is player death one. It's a armature animation. You can click here and you can see just a simple death animation. But I have other animations. For example, I have death two, which is an armature animation as well. Here we go, different death animation. And then I have death three, which is another armature animation. And it turns out that when you want, when you make a game, sometimes, a lot of times, you want to get a random animation. And no matter what animation is, you just want to execute the random animation. And dying in video games is something that often requires a random animation. You do want every character dying in a game to execute the same animation. That's why now you can go ahead and create a new asset, which is a random animator. And I do have the death animation here, which is a random animation animator. I showed you uh, how it looks like. If I click here, you can see that I have a bunch of options and I can even keep adding new options here and it, and this what this random animator animator does is every time you play it it will pick one of those options here and randomly execute them so if I go ahead and select my player and change here to the random animator you can see death animation it's a the random animator click here and you can see that every time he dies he will probably run a different animation so it's running this one, now this one, now this one. So completely random. And of course, I can, again, click here to edit and add a new one. For example, let's add like a uh, walk animation. I'm not going to make any sense at all, but you can see that randomly, it will probably execute a walk animation. Um, it's random, so sometime it will end up doing this. Here we go. Here's, here's the random death animation, which is just a walk animation, does not make any sense. And of course, I can click here to disable. And that's amazing because you can pick like uh, attack animations using this, you can pick death animations, you can pick like idle animations, you can create like custom uh, animators that's just uh, random animation selection. And what's cool about that is uh, you can nest this. So if I create another random animator, I can actually add this here as an option. So the random animator can execute another random animator and it can execute another random uh, animation types which is amazing and taking advantage of that uh, i also added an option to create a new asset type which is a character animator and i do have it here if i click you you see here uh, that i do have a bunch of uh, uh, random like simple stuff which is four axes and smooth look at but i also have um, and this is just like some adjustment settings, but it have like idling options that you can select like the idle animation and you can, you can 
pick a blend to it uh, so you can blend between the other animations and you can select what you want the transform to do for example if the character is idle you want this transform to um, to to keep idle of course you don't want the transform to change so you don't update but in the walk for example uh, while the character is walking and as a kid in the player walk you want to look at direction because the, this direction is the direction that the character uh, is walking so want to do that but in some ca in some cases you don't want this for example um, it's not ready yet, but it will have a four directional and an eight directional animator as well that will uh, allow you to um, use like a forward, a backwards, a left and right animations. And in this case, you don't want to look at a, a direction. You just want to uh, reset this, you know, so you can select this. Uh, it's really possible here. You have like the running animation and threshold. You have jumping animation. There's no death animation yet, but I'm planning to implement. Um, there's not yet because like that death in cave is not something specific, like it's game specific, so I'm not sure how I will reflect this. But the thing is, if I select this player again and go ahead in the animation and select my character animator, you can see that it's idling. But as soon as I start moving and the way it moves is using the, 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 the character component here of the parent object, uh, it will update just fine. So if I go ahead and go back to my scene and if I hit play you can see it's idling but if I start walking it will walk and if I go back idling it will idle and I can do everything I can run and do all sorts of things so this is the new character animator that I have in cave and I'm very excited about that because uh, it will allow you to do a bunch of new stuff. And the reason why uh, I said in the beginning of this video that I'm glad I did not record me uh, writing this code because by the end of the la latest video, um, I actually opened a cave engine source code and started uh, writing the animator. But well, it turns out that I have to refactor a lot of stuff to make this work. And just for you guys that are following this to understand what's going on, um, the, the thing is like the, the way the animation was working would not handle this this kind of n n this type of nested animation system because um, what I want, for example, for the character animator, I want this to be like a regular animator that I can just go to my entity, select this, and add this as a regular animation. But I I, I had to change the system a lot because. It now implies that the animation that is here needs to be updated as well, and that was not happening. Like, not um, not updating the animation itself, but updating the system because now this is a system that runs code behind the scenes, uh, of course, to define if I want to ride or walk or run. So I wanted to update this, and I wanted to do this recursively because if here in the idling instead of G the idle, I change this to, for example, the death animation, you can see that it's running this character animation system, uh, but the character animation system itself is running the death animation system. So so it, I wanted to make, I, I had to make a system that was recursively um, possible to do it so. And that required a lot of stuff. Oops, and the engine just crashed. <laughs> Let me replay it. I'm back. And again, it's still work in progress. Uh, there's uh, some smaller things that I still have to figure out. For example, there's no, uh, this, the engine does not handle like um, loops in this because like if I create this death animation right now, it's possible to add the death animation itself to this option. And that will of course crash the game engine and uh, the, it will crash as well if I do this uh, in a bunch of nested levels. And this is not something that you want to, of course, but the engine does not handle this. So it's it, it's experimental, but if you take care of to not do the circular stuff, it will not crash. Uh, but it's very cool to have this new system in place. And I'm very excited about it because it will allow you to create a lot of new things very easily. Again, you can have a char character idling, walking and running with no code required, with no system required. It's just built in the engine. And that's only the beginning. I want to add way more cool stuff. So I'm excited about that. Uh, so this is was this was sorry one of the new features that i added in cave and the other and i think i will split this video into a different one because i do have this vehicle system here which is amazing and did that alone will require me uh like an entire new video to explain everything that's going on so in the next video i'll explain why i've added the vehicle and um i did that off camera as well because uh i i had to 
to go ahead and ride the vehicle for two reasons. The first one is, of course, because we are making uh, GTA-like games and uh, it's not a Grand Theft Auto uh, the, uh, game if you can't drive vehicles. So I had to create vehicles in the game. And I could make like a very cartoon uh, vehicle physics just like this game and probably GTA 1. But I, want, I decided to make like an advanced one instead. And the reason is um, I'm doing another project. Uh, this is like not um, a personal project. It's a, it's a team project, not using Cave, but uh, using a custom engine. And I'm the one one responsible to create the vehicles. Yes, I cannot say like anything at all about this project yet. It's again another project to another team with another team. But what what I can say is I'm responsible to do the vehicle physics, and it's a vehicle game. <laughs> uh, so I. I, I took this opportunity to also figure out how to implement a vehicle physics. That's why it's here. Okay. So the next video, we'll go ahead and figure out how this works. Thanks for watching. And I see you in the next video.